So, and also you have reboot timing. Uh, this basically refers to the amount of time allowed to complete a new to reboot after its eviction. By the way, uh, it is strongly recommended that or said that you should not change these default val values of, for these parameters below the default value. All right. Uh, next slide, please. All right, now we will discuss about outing this functionality, the importance of voiding disk in a cluster where. <clears throat> so to start with, okay, cluster synchronization demand process is responsible to do the uh, node membership as well as the group membership to which it has to read the outing disk. Now <clears throat> it records and manages the node membership information in the outing disk. Um, by the way, at, the, at any given time, each node of a cluster must be able to access at least more than half of the voting disk. So that's why it is recommended to have voting disk in odd numbers. Now, if you look at this picture closely, we are doing the network heartbeat every second and also we are doing the disk heartbeat. As I told you previously that every node has two blocks in a voting disk. One is out block, another is kill block. So every second they go and update, I, they do the IO update in the voting disk for the out and also read the kill block in case if they receive any poison uh, pockets to kill or maybe suicide the node because they cannot see other people. Now in this picture we see node 1 is able to see node 2 communicate through network uh, interconnect and then node 2 can see node 3 the same node 3 can see 2 and 3. So this is like a <clears throat> all is well situation and everybody can see everyone and they go to the outing disk and they say yes we are all present and synchronized. So there is no problem. So your cluster will be running without any troubles in this picture. Can we go to the next slide? All right, here I am going to explain you the split brain syndromes. Basically what is split brain and uh, what happens in case if some of the nodes cannot see another nodes. What happens in this situation? This picture basically explains the split brain problem like what happens when a node no longer sends the heartbeat to the other members of the cluster. When <clears throat> this cannot, uh, for example now in this example we see we have a three node cluster node 1 and 2, 3. Now node 1 and 2 they can communicate each other over the interconnect. They can send the network heartbeat. However, 1 and 2, two they cannot send the network heartbeat to 3 because maybe there is a problem in your interconnect or maybe there is some problem with your uh, NIC on the NIC card, maybe in the, uh, on the node 3 or something. Now, no, num node 1 and number, uh, node number 2, they can go to voting disk and they see, yes, we both can see each other, but we don't see number 3. And at the same time, <clears throat> the node 3, okay, they cannot send the uh, network heartbeat to the network, uh, sorry, node 1 and node 2, but it goes to the ODING disk and reads its ODING disk and updates. However, when it goes to the kill block for this node, which is node 3, it, it sees that it has been overwritten. Actually, it has been overwritten by the other nodes because they cannot see them. So they says, okay, once we don't see him, why don't we evict him from the node because we want to keep the synchronization. We want to have the information synchronized. So once the node 3 reads kill block in the voting disk, it feels that yeah, information has been overwritten, let us, let's suicide myself. So the node will be evicted and rebooted immediately. Next screen please. Yeah, this is what uh, split brain, when you have like a <clears throat> scenario where two or more operating processes in a distributor system like a cluster and they have like a loose connectivity with one another, they cannot continue to operate independently. So in a cluster environment, you cannot have two systems without any synchronization. So in this situation, one has to be evicted. So if you talk about when you have a two node cluster, what happens when a split brain occurs. So basically the first node that comes up will remain and the second node will be booted. At the same time, if you have more than two uh, uh, nodes involved in a cluster, so if only a small subset of 
nodes they cannot see other part so the higher part of the cluster nodes will remain the subset of uh, nodes that cannot see other people will be evicted next screen please all right uh, so if you are uh, a oracle rack dba one of the most challenging aspect of any rack dba while working in a large cluster environment is to uh, tackle the no reboot and eviction causes. This could be is going to be very challenging. In this slide, we outline most of the common root causes for a node reboot. The purpose of a node reboot eviction is maintain to overall cluster where health, prevent corruptions by removing the bad node which cannot communicate with others. So these are the out, these are the points that uh, causes generally to node reboots. So the first one is network failure. It could be your interconnect problem or maybe the latency between the nodes. If you have a delay between these two nodes, so they cannot send the network heartbeat to each other, this will cause other the node to reboot. And the second point is slow connection, which we talk. So <clears throat> you, can, you can survive if a node cannot send could not send the heartbeat uh, within 30 seconds of time it will evict. So you need to check your private configuration to see what is getting delayed. And likewise you have voting disk IO cannot read or write. For any reason if the node cannot go and update the IO to the voting disk block within given uh, limited time which is 300, uh, 200 seconds which like I spoke in earlier on the node will be evicted. The other point that may cause the node reboot is the CPU, lack of CPU. So this is one of the important things that you need to make sure that you have resources available in your cluster. So this is important because if no CPU is available for the Elman process to do the heartbeat ping, then your node is going to be evicted. And also if there is any like uh, uh, unexpected failure of your cluster synchronization demand process or maybe someone kill the cluster synchronization demand process your, your node is going to reboot and also some of the Oracle clusterware bugs is going to cause the node reboots as well. Uh, next slide please. Alright, uh, the other important factor for any RAC DBA is to diagnose the cluster information. <clears throat> so all the cluster components have their own log files to which they write most of their action to it. <clears throat> and when you refer to these log files, it will help you to diagnose as well as analyze the problem or issues of your cluster. Where. For instance, if you are, <clears throat> you can refer to your uh, cluster synchronization log uh, which is under the CSSD directory for any node eviction information. If a node is evicted, if you want to see these details, you can go, you can navigate through the log directory to the OCCD.log file and you can refer the information why the log, why the node has been evicted. Is it due to the network habit or this habit? And also you can see in how many seconds the node is going to evict. So you will see the messages. Likewise, you can also refer CRSD log which registers like your resource auto startup and startup things. If you have any problems starting up your services automatically, you can go and check. And also there is another directory called client directory, which basically creates a log whenever you create or whenever you run commands like OCR check, OCR config, or when you run like OCR dem, it generates these log files under this directory. <clears throat> and the the good thing about these uh, directories and every like uh, the CRS log file will be archived after every 10 MB. For example, if you, the CRSD log file is 10 MB size, automatically it will be archived like CRSD 101, CRD 1002. So <clears throat> same is for cluster synchronization lag as well. But for c cluster synchronization, the size to be archived is uh, upper limit is 20 MB. Whenever this log file becomes 20 MB size, automatically it will be archived to the name and it start the another one. 
So basically this directory, the hierarchy of the log files gives you the idea to where to go and see the information. And there is another important log which is alert log file. This alert log file gives you the more information like how many nodes of your cluster are up and running. And also, <clears throat> I also uh, recommend you to the uh, refer the files OS specific files. For example, when you start up a cluster and if your cluster is not up and you want to know the reason why your cluster is not up and you go and refer this CRSD and CSSD and you don't find any information. So in that situation, I strongly recommend you to go to the OS level specific log files. If you are in Unix, uh, Linux, you can go to the WAV uh, message log file where you can see why your cluster where is not up. Is there something preventing you to start your cluster. So this is the first place that you need to st look into if in case if your clusterware is not coming up. Uh, Tariq? Thanks, Syed. Um, Hello, Tariq? Yeah, thank you, Syed. Uh, ta uh, Tariq, one more second. Uh, yeah. No, no, one second. I would like to say something before I wrap up my thing, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I want to I want to close my session on a thank you note. So I thank you all who tune in today and join our previous session as well. I also thank my co-panelists Bert and Jeremy and you Tariq and you guys rock and it's been pleasure being uh, co-presenting with you guys and my special thanks goes to Tariq for arranging such a great event which is highly useful for the Oracle community and I look forward to participating in many future events. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sayed. Don't go away yet because you still have to answer questions at the end. <laughs> yes. Okay, so sure. let's, uh, let's talk about Cache Fusion. To uh, give you a little perspective of, to put things into perspective, let me begin by giving you a quick summary of Oracle Rack, sort of summarize our previous sessions, and talk a little bit quickly about Rack, the components, technologies, paradigms that it comprises. An Oracle Rack cluster is made up of a single unified cluster database comprising of shared control and data files that sit on shared storage accessible by all, all nodes which can have multiple instances thereby presenting a single source of truth across the board to the end user. Typically and generally low cost commodity hardware is used for the Oracle Rack compute nodes. Multiple instances can reside on multiple nodes. With the advent of 11G R2, you can have Oracle Rack on a single node. That product is called Oracle Rack One Node. Each Rack instance, instance has its own set of undo table spaces, redo log files, and such. So where does, what is Cache Fusion? How does it come into picture? Cache Fusion is essentially, it's the backbone behind Oracle Rack that allows applications to parallelize and scale out versus scaling up within a single monolithic SMP uh, mainframe-like machine. Cache synchronization, or fusion as it's called, allows simultaneous and current transaction processing amongst the instances. So how does it achieve this? Basically, it uses a physical private network interconnect to implement this fusion or synchronization of blocks, data buffer blocks, to present a read consistent image of data across all the instances of the cluster. 